Hey, thanks for joining me. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a product from a company called Dr. Prepare. Now it is a 12 volt battery, but it's a little bit more than that. So continuing my quest to find unique features and products to bring to your attention, this one definitely fits the bill. This is not a product like anything that I've seen before. So I think you're gonna get a kick out of this. Let's find out if it's worth a look. I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but this may be the first video of mine that you've ever seen. You know, I get lots of offers from vendors to review their product. And I, I turn down probably 95% of them because it's things that are basically the same as stuff that I've already reviewed. And I just don't feel like rehashing it. And I wanna waste your time and I don't wanna waste my time. So I'm really looking for things that have standout features. And this is definitely one of those unique products. So let's get this thing out of the box and see what we're dealing with here. So I'm guessing these are a couple of metal mounting plates so you can bolt this thing down, maybe for a marine application or something like that. One manual. Now at first glance, it looks like an oddly shaped deep cycle lithium iron phosphate kind of drop-in replacement battery. But what's with this? <laughs> you know, there's a giant cutout here. What, what could that be? This is what made me very intrigued about this battery. In fact, there's a switch on the top that gives me a, a state of charge. I don't know if you can make that out. That's kind of cool. You normally don't see that on a battery like this either. So this is a 100 amp hour. So this means you have got 1280 watt hours at 12 volts or 12.8 nominal. And it also comes with this. This is what makes it super interesting. So this, is a little DC module, right? So I can actually, it's got an Anderson connector on the bottom there, and this Anderson port plugs into this Anderson connector on the top of the battery. So you can see it right there. And I'll put a picture up there, a close up, so you can see what that looks like. So in addition to being able to be used like a conventional 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery to, to, to power an AC inverter, or other AC or DC type components and things like that and recharge it via solar, it's got this DC module. And this DC module has a 12 volt port, right? Cigarette lighter adapter port right there on the front. And it has got some additional ports. It's got two USB A ports. It's got a USB C port, a DC 5521 port. And again, I'll put, I'll put a picture up here so you can see these in better detail. Uh, but then it's also got another Anderson connector there. So I can actually charge this with a portable solar panel. So what this effectively allows me to do is use this battery as a portable power station, at least for DC. Now you notice there aren't any AC ports on here. So this, this is not an AC inverter, but it is a deep cycle 12 volt battery with the capability of taking this on the go with you. I think that's pretty cool. So let's go run some tests on this thing and find out what its usable capacity is, uh, how well this little DC module works, and um, if there's any other tricks up its sleeve that I'm currently not aware of. We'll find out. Anyway, let's jump forward and see how that all went. All right, we're gonna do a DC discharge test on this. We're actually gonna do two of those. We're gonna do one through the uh, hub that attaches on there through the Anderson connector. And then we're also gonna do one directly from the, uh, the terminals and see if there's any difference there. There shouldn't really be much difference there, I'm not expecting, but we're gonna try it anyway. So this just snaps on. If I can get it in there, there we go. I'm not sure if you can see over here, this thing is fully charged. So we have to turn this on. All right, and we will use this port. And I'm gonna use my battery tester. It's a nice secure fit. And we're reading 13.6 down here. We're going to dial this up to about 10 amps, which is typically what I use to discharge these. And that little sticker on there said, don't try to discharge past, I think, 12 amps. So 10 amps is where we are. And we'll see how much power we get through this hub from the DC port. All right, on our first DC discharge test, we got a total of 1,200 and let's round up to six watt hours. 
All right, we are done with the DC discharge test off of the terminals, since we already did the one through the uh, car socket. And let's just see what we ended up with. So we got 1,221.4 watt hours and 97.96, so 98 amp hours. All right, just for fun, I've got my ISCO 12 volt refrigerator connected to the DC hub on the PowerMax uh, battery. So I've been getting this uh, power into the refrigerator for a little over an hour now, and I got this thing uh, preset to five degrees. So yeah, this thing has been running for a solid hour off this 12 volt port. I'm gonna keep it running for a while just to see, uh, make sure that it uh, continues to run without any issues. At this point, I'm not expecting any, but um, yeah. So looks to me, at least for now, that uh, you can definitely run a 12 volt fridge off of this DC module on this PowerMax battery from Dr. Prepare. All right, we're gonna test the low temp disconnect on this Dr. Prepare battery. It says that it's somewhere around 41 degrees, so I think we're going to make sure we get it well into the freezing category. So I'm gonna turn on my ISCO fridge and I'm going to dial this thing down. So it's at five degrees right now. And we're gonna drop this thing inside and I've got a Victron smart shunt on here, so I'll be able to track for sure if it starts charging. So this is what we're what we're dealing with here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this thing up. I'm going to leave this thing in here for at least 12 hours, and then I'm going to pull it out. It should be pretty well frozen, and I'm going to hook it up to a solar charger uh, with good solar input, and we're going to find out if it starts charging right away or if it clearly is not going to charge, and then after it warms up, We'll find out if it resumes charging automatically. So let's see. All right, just so you can see what I did here. Got the black jumper cable on my negative. It's going through the shunt. So any energy that does come through the charge controller will go through that shunt. I'll be able to monitor it. Now this is the uh, 40 amp Bouge RV charge controller. Obviously getting no power. So the BMS clearly shut down, as is the Bluetooth. <laughs> We're going to find out how long it takes for this thing to wake up. Currently, 8 o'clock in the morning. So we'll check back in an hour and see if this thing is doing anything. All right, it has been one hour since I hooked this little contraption up. You can see I got a green light on my charge controller. So this thing has turned back on. So it's actually safe to go ahead and put some solar in there. Now I've actually hooked solar up to a, a different unit for another test I'm running. But I'm going to disconnect that and see if we can start actually charging this unit um, I'm pointing to here that you couldn't see. <laughs> I'm going to see if we can start charging this. Now, we should be able to since the charge controller has been uh, energized. So let me switch the cables over. All right. The top light is my PV light. It's very bright. Definitely getting a charge from the solar system here. We're pulling in 15.5 or 15 volts. The green light on the bottom is the battery indicator. So it shows we're connected and the green light on the top is our solar indicator. All right, let's take a look at the Victron app, which is the smart shunt I have on the battery and just see what it is showing. What it's basically telling us here, ignore the 100%, that, that is not accurate because I've not calibrated this for the battery. It's picking up 14.35, 14.4 volts from the charge controller, but you can see the current is zero and we are inputting zero watts. So we're not charging the battery right now. If I go over to trends, yeah, you can see my amp line there. The one on the bottom is, uh, is flat. So what you'll see is when this thing actually starts, uh, starts charging, the amp line will uh, spike up. So the BMS is preventing us from charging this right now. So we'll keep running this and we'll see how it, uh, how it looks in about an hour or so. Let's find out if we're actually charging or not. Actually, we can see the blue charging indicator that we are, in fact, now charging. Let's take a look at the uh, Victron app, see how different it is from what we saw before. All right, reconnecting to the smart shunt. Oh yeah, very different. Got 16 amps going in. There we are, 16.74 and 220 watts. Let's look at the trend. Yeah, you can see that bottom line now. My current 
number much higher. Yeah, so we are definitely getting charge input to this. So the uh, low temp disconnect definitely works. And actually it kicked on to allow a discharge uh, earlier than it allowed a charge. So when we, earlier when we saw, you know, the power going to the Bouge RV, the BMS was enabling a discharge because the discharge disconnect temp is lower. That threshold is lower than the charge disconnect. So it had to warm up a little bit more in the core before it allowed us to actually send a charge. So, and you know, you can actually get a nice visual indicator right there on top with those little blue LEDs right there. So the uh, temperature safeties definitely work for this uh, battery. BMS is doing its job. All right, I have got just a quick portable 100 watt solar panel in here. And I have converted it from its uh, eight millimeter barrel connector to an Anderson with an adapter cable and put that in there. You really can't make that out, maybe. Yeah, you can, it's flashing, right? So we are definitely charging through what I suspect is a, a PWM charge controller. I'm pretty sure they didn't put an MPPT charge controller in here, but I'm not 100% sure, just assuming. So I'm gonna let this run. It is actually very cold out. It's below freezing, so I'm gonna move the battery into the sun in hopes that it continues to charge because the low temp disconnect will kick back in if I leave it out here long enough because we are at about 28 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, just to recap on some of those tests, the uh, DC discharge test, I think it averaged about, I think we call it about 95% of rated capacity uh, in terms of the usable capacity. And that make, basically says that the BMS is cutting you off at right around 5% to maintain kind of vital capacity for basic BMS functions and things like that. And that's kind of to be expected. Um, let's talk about some of the other details here. In terms of pricing, this thing uh, typically runs for $4.69 on Amazon, uh, but I just got a note from Dr. Prepare saying that they just dropped the price on this for the next month or two for th to $3.99, which is actually a fantastic deal. And then I've got details in the description below if you want to go check them out for another coupon code on top of that, which is good for another 5%. And I think they're running a Black Friday sale where if you buy this direct through their uh, website, and again, I've got a, a link in the description below, they'll throw in like a 10,000 milliamp hour uh, USB battery bank on top of it just as kind of a bonus. So that might be worth checking out if something like that would be helpful. Now the warranty on this, on the battery itself is five years. So that's a, that's a very solid warranty. The warranty on the hub itself is one year. So just be aware of that. There's a difference. You can buy the hub by itself if you ever need to replace this for any reason. So. That's cool to be able to have that option. Now we saw in the testing that the low temp charging protection actually does work just like it's designed to do. And so very, it's very cool. The actual range is somewhere between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 41 degrees Fahrenheit. I wasn't able to dial in exactly precisely where that cutoff happens, but uh, it does work definitely in that range. And it uh, does automatically re-enable charging from the, the BMS re-enables charging when it does uh, achieve a suitable temperature. Now the 100 amp BMS that's in this thing has a maximum discharge rate of 100 amps and a maximum charge rate of 50 amps. So just be aware of that, it's a 50 amp charge rate. Power Max battery weighs 27 and a half pounds. Nothing you know, interesting there. It's pretty typical for a lithium iron phosphate battery in this capacity. Some other important things to be aware of, this battery does let you connect four of these, up to four of them, but only in parallel, not in series. And the reason for that is actually fairly ob obvious because this has a 12 volt DC output hub on it. This hub is not gonna work if you connect these in series because that's gonna change the voltage output. Suddenly you're at 24 volts or 48 volts. And so you have to run this if you're going to use the, the DC hub here. You have to keep this in 12 volt configuration, which means you're gonna connect it uh, multiple ones in parallel, not in series. Now it does have a stackable design, so you can kind of see there's a little bit of a taper here, which means the terminals are a little bit recessed below the, the top, which is nice because that makes it actually very hard to, to accidentally uh, short circuit this thing and create a problem. And I did mention to them, since this does sort of double as a power station, which is super unique, um, it would be nice if there was actual little caps that you could put on that just to prevent accidental uh, short circuit. Seems kind of unlikely though because of the way these things uh, are tapered, but you could actually stack multiple units. It's designed to be stackable if you wanted to use it in that configuration as well, which is pretty cool. Now, as you saw in the clip, you can directly con uh, connect a 100 watt solar panel to the front of this and charge it. 
I thought that was pretty neat. Since it is limited to a 100 watt panel, just be aware that your typical 100 watt panel is not gonna produce more than somewhere around five to 600 watts in a day. And that is not enough to top this thing off from fully depleted to fully charged in, in a single day. So that's that's more like a really a full two days worth of charging without any discharging to get this thing fully uh, recharged just based on a single 100 watt solar panel. So do keep that in mind. Um, now, obviously you can take this back and hook up a full on charge controller, external charge controller and larger solar array that's basically limited by whatever charge controller you're using. And you can pump uh, this thing back up and you know charge it very quickly when you're charging it through the terminals and not through the little portable uh, power station mode that this hub gives you access to. It's just cool to have that option. That's, uh, you know, it's not something you're probably gonna use it primarily, but if you're in a pinch and you got a portable solar panel, kind of a no brainer to just keep topping it off as much as you can where, when and wherever you have the opportunity. So I like the fact that you just can even do that at all. And I think the last thing I would mention is that, uh, and this is not something unique to this particular battery, it's kind of in general, that when you're looking at a, uh, a lithium ion battery or a lithium iron phosphate battery, and you're trying to size it with uh, an inverter, basically you wanna go with your amp hour capacity rating to be about 10% of your inverter's output rating. So if you have a 1000 watt inverter, a 100 amp hour battery is appropriate for that configuration. If you've got a 2000 watt inverter, a 200 amp hour configuration, which would be two of these in parallel, that would be an appropriate configuration. And you can, you can uh, hook, as I said, up to four of these, creating up to 400 amp hours. So that would support up to a 4,000 watt AC inverter. And the reason for that is you don't want the AC inverter to over, to over discharge the batteries and actually damage the batteries and create a problem. So that's why there's that uh, kind of a calculation just to, as a rule of thumb that you would apply to any, any kind of these little uh, DIY solar generator type systems. So anyway, just to kind of wrap up, I, I think this is really a unique device and I like the extra flexibility that it gives you to use this in a variety of ways when and how you need to use it. Anyway, I hope you found some of this information useful. If you did, please consider giving me the thumbs up on the video. I'd really appreciate that. And consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. I've got a lot more stuff coming, uh, solar panel and power station, some very interesting stuff coming actually. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, I do hope to see you in the next one. And until then, have fun out there. Hey, thanks for joining me in another video. Obviously it's another video.